challenges must be Okay, it's recording on OBS. Yeah. Okay. okay, so a mover and a seconder to open the meeting, and that was uh, moved by Peter, Councillor Peter Kistmaker, second by Councillor Jerry Gostefan. Be it resolved that we do call this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, May 17, 2023, at 6 02 p.m. And if there's no objections, we'll continue, and I'll hand it off to Deputy Mayor Belinda Kistmaker. The Council of the Top of the Corporation of Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. The Council of the Corporation of the Township of Marketing would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging that the land on which we gather here today is Treaty Number 9, 1905 1906 territory, the traditional lands of Indigenous peoples. As we work towards reconciliation, may we all live with respect, honest land, and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse peoples. Thank you. So we'll carry on. Item number three, uh, review of the agenda. Item number four, we'll have the agenda as presented. If I can get a seconder, please move by Councillor Bullock Kistmaker, second by Councillor Peter Kistmaker. Be a result that the council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. And if there's no objection, we'll continue. Item number five is declaration of pecuniary interest and declaration of conflict of interest. Council, you can do that now at any time throughout the meeting. Continue on to the adoption of the minutes. We have three sets of minutes to adopt. If I can get a mover and a seconder for April 5th, please. Move by Councillor Ted Shenneman, second by Councillor Drago Stefanik. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, as distributed. Any comment or note to those minutes? Okay, there being none, we'll carry on. Uh, those in favor? And that carried. 6.2 is April 24th. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Monday, May 20, April 24th, 2023, as distributed. And any note or comment to the minutes from Council? Okay, and Eileen, you had a comment for those minutes? Uh, yes, so uh, I just wanted to give Council an update and I'll let them know that the uh, reports, uh, the energy audit report, the geotechnical report, and the topographic survey. Uh, the energy audit was submitted on February 14, 2023. The geotechnical report was submitted November 14, 2022. And unfortunately, um, I am not sure when the topographic survey was submitted. It must have been submitted to the previous CEO clerk. Um, but it shows that it was saved um, on our end on December 6, 2022, um, and I wasn't CC'd on any emails. So um, uh, that's when those were submitted. And then unfortunately, it wasn't uh, until I received the energy audit that I realized that these reports were the type of reports that need to be uh, like submitted and disclosed to council. So moving forward, I will ensure that these types of reports are always submitted to council. Council. Okay, great. Thank you, Eileen. If there's no further comments, I'll put those to a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. 6.3 is the special meeting. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Move by Councillor Ted Shenley, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker. Be resolved that the Council of Corporation of Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of Council held on two, Thursday, May 4th, 2023, as distributed. Any comments or notes to those minutes for Council? <clears throat> there being none, I put them to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to item number seven. No business arising. And number eight is the deputation. So our first presentation tonight is Ontario Clean Water Agency is uh, meeting us virtual in Horn Pain on our, and it's Patrick Kutcher that's going to be with us, correct? Yes. Hi, good evening. 
Good evening. Hi, Patrick. Nice to have you with us virtually in Horn Pain tonight. And I'll give the floor right over to you for your presentation. So I'm here tonight to talk to you guys about um, some items that were identified in the 2022 Horn Pain Drinking Water Inspection Report. Issue identified, level of haloacetic acids has exceeded the Ontario Drinking Water Standard, an OREG 16903 limit of 80 micrograms per litre expressed as a four quarter running average of quarterly sampling results since April of 2021. As of January 1st, 2020, a new drinking water, uh, a new Ontario drinking water uh, standard, NORAG 16903, limit for haloacetic acids of 80 micrograms per liter, uh, was introduced. Uh, HAAs are a family of related compounds which are formed as a result of disinfection processes. Uh, compounds such as HAAs are commonly referred to as a. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Patrick. Yes. I'm sorry, it's pretty choppy from our end. I'm wondering if you um, shut your camera down. Sure. It might help. How's that? Is it better? Uh, not, not, we can't see you right now. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Yes. So I'll just start from the beginning of the description there. Uh, HAAs are a family of related compounds uh, which are formed as a result of disinfection processes. Uh, compounds such as HAAs are commonly referred to as disinfection byproducts. Uh, source water conditions such as slightly acidic water, high organic matter content, and the level of type of disinfection and elevated temperatures can increase production of HAAs. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, samples collected from January 2017 to January 2021 resulted in HA running averages generally below uh, 80 micrograms per liter, with the exception of three consecutive quarters in 2019. Starting in the third quarter of 2020, HA individual sample results began to rise. Uh, the running average went above 80 micrograms in the second quarter of April 2021. Starting in April of 2023, a sharp increase in both the individual and four quarter running averages appear to, be, to have begun. Uh, in the first quarter of 2023, samples resulted in HAA average going above 100 micrograms per liter for the first time in the system. Sorry, it keeps going the wrong direction here. So action items um, that were identified in the report. Um, a report on what actions have been taken to date and a proposal for future actions must be submitted to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks no later than Friday, 16, 2023. Due to the current 
and ongoing levels of HAs in the system, the municipality and its operators must take action. It is recommended that the following actions be taken as soon as possible. Hire a consultant with experience in HAA and THM reduction. Conduct an in-house review of all sample and operational data at the time of HA sampling regarding factors which may contribute to THM or HA production. These may include, but are not limited to, water storage retention time, pH level, precursor levels and types, turbidity, raw and treated, UVT readings, water temperature, chlorination records, chlorine demand and or dosage, dates, times and or methods of filter cleaning. Uh, implement any strategies or possible operational changes which may arise from the in-house review. This review and action are in regards only to operational changes, not changes to the treatment facility, methods or equipment, unless required for the purposes of maintaining or repair. Replacement of existing membrane fil filtration units as they reach their expected duration life, scale, uh, life cycle may be helpful. There is some evidence that older membranes may remove less of the organic precursors. The MECP understands that the facility is currently has plans uh, to replace uh, the current membranes over the next three years. <clears throat> the municipality must review the HA results with the local public health unit. A meeting took place with the local Porcupine Health Unit on May 8th, which included the Township and Aqua representatives. The Ministry of Health has advised the Township to hire a consultant to review the system and provide recommendations to reduce HA levels within the distribution system. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And we can, uh, I can open up the floor now for questions from council. <laughs> Councillor Spanik, go ahead. Yeah, Dr. Mayor, uh, I have a few questions actually and some comments as well. Why wasn't this flagged earlier when you start talking about a rise of average report in 2021, <laughs> this is 2023, and it was, a, as you said, was gradual increase. Yeah. So why wasn't it flagged sooner? Um, I'm not sure as to why um, it's taken, you know, uh, several years for the MECP to um, require action. Um, we have noticed ourselves the increase and have done um, some tweaking of the plant um, to try and mitigate uh, these rising levels. Um, this is relatively new. Uh, I mean, this new regulation was introduced in, in 2020, and even now, um, it's still not really um, well understood. Um, there's um, not a lot of information available on uh, HAAs, um, and it's it's still a, it's a emerging issue, basically. Um, and it the old um, limit used to be a hundred. And there wasn't really an issue then, but then they reduced it down to 80 micrograms in 2020. And since then, um, we're kind of just been above that limit um, with recently um, alarming uh, increases. Does that answer your question? Can you yeah, Go ahead, yeah. uh, so basically, my other question is how old are current membranes? Because they're a crucial part of the filtration. I know that for a fact. Thank you. Um, What's the age? I don't have uh, an exact date of the age of um, at least one of the membrane trains. We did a full replacement of um, filter train number two last year. Um, we plan on doing a, a replacement of filter train number one this year. Um, the last time it was completed was in 2016. Um, I'm, I don't have, I wasn't able to find anyway a record of when 
Um, train three was done last, but that would be the following year. Um, we'd be looking at um, replacing that and having all of them. Their their lifespan should should be you know at least ten to fifteen years, but that depends on um, a lot of factors that can contribute to their wear. Okay, thank you. So you're saying my question is the second last one. We have no in-house expertise on the HA or DBS um, products. You, there's no one in there that you could use in in-house versus a consultant. Is that correct? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? I was a bit choppy there. Okay. I was asking, do you have any expertise in-house at Water Agency to handle the HAA and DBFs within in-house versus going to a consultant? Um, yes, uh, I was actually um, just consulting with other managers and we do have um, a process optimization team um, that I can acquire with and they do have a guy who um, is very uh, fluent in this subject. Um, HAs and, and THM disinfection byproducts. Um, so we can inquire within our our own company and uh, look forward to a solution in that way, rather than going through to a third party consultant. And we can, and we can present those options to you as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Stanek. Thank you, Patrick. Go ahead, Councillor Peter Kitzwinger. Through you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, Patrick. So. I'm just actually Googling because I had no idea what HAAs mean. So it's a, it's a byproduct of the disinfection system that we have. Yes. What? So you, you get a higher number of the HAAs. Is, for number one, if we change the way we do things, will that help? And number two, what does it do to uh, people and how dangerous it is? Well, um, when it comes to the health type of questions, I would definitely inquire with the Ministry of Health um, as I'm, you know, I'm not a medical professional, so I can't really make those comments. Um, as far as um, the disinfection procedure, that would be something that we would look into as part of that study. Um, that consultant would review data and our current um, SOPs and processes for um, how we operate the system. And they may be able to identify uh, issues that we can uh, rectify and, and put on the right path. And hopefully, um, you know, we can do that without making any major alterations to the system. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kissmaker. Councillor Shaman, go ahead, Ted. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Patrick, I have a couple of questions. So <clears throat> because the results are very sporadic, it means that I, I would think that it means that the filtration doesn't necessarily be the problem. If we looked at the source, because the, the tannin levels, HAAs are uh, extremely volatile depending on the tannins, but we looked at the source of Moonlight Lake to see if there's something changing. As something changed with our filtration system, if it was constant water coming through with the same water, would we not have successive rates that are relatively the same? And our rates are jumping all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's actually not uncommon um, for HA results to kind of jump all over the place depending on the season. Because as you have, uh, you know, the fall and the spring, you have turnover in lakes. And that causes organic material to kind of become suspended and, and more available within uh, that water that is uh, taken in to the system, um, which can have effects on, on uh, the HAA production. Um, though that is uh, definitely something that would be looked at um, through the study, um, would be the raw water quality. And uh, we could look at, you know, we've got raw water quality data for years that we can look back on. And uh, someone with the right keen eye might be able to identify uh, an issue there if there is one. Supplementary. So Patrick, when this trend started to happen and then it became a recurring trend, what remedial actions were taken, if any, and were they in line with the MOE guidelines uh, in response to those overages? Well, 
beyond um, you know just operational changes um, to chemical dosages or um, you know more frequent uh, cleaning of the filters um, there's not much um, as far as MECP guidelines um, as there's not a lot of uh, literature related to um, this topic we have um, obviously started the uh, stage replacement of the membranes. Um, we've played a little bit with um, pH levels as they can have um, an effect as slightly more acidic water can increase production. We have increased um, our pH adjustment going out um, to a higher pH. Um, we've lowered our chlorine dosage um, basically to as low as we can comfortably make it, um, you know, without uh, running into issues there. We've, we've kind of taken, um, you know, as many steps as we can without causing an issue, um, you know, in another sense, right? With, we can only make certain adjustments and then kind of see how that how that goes. Um, and because the samples are quarterly, there's there's quite a bit of time in between each sample. Um, so you know you get a high one, and then you make an adjustment. You take another sample in the next quarter, and then you get a low one. Um, you know, did your adjustment make a difference, or is there another factor? Um, that's not quite clear. Okay, thank you. Supplementary. <clears throat> if this, um, so if the inspection hadn't have taken place, at what point would your team decide to it was time to alert council and mayor through council or the council through mayor that there was a problem? Um, when do we get to the point that we say, Houston, we have a problem? Well, we started this discussion um, probably about a year ago. Um, when we first started discussing replacing um, the membrane uh, filters. And, and that those would have been uh, closed meetings with um, public works director and uh, CAO at the time. Thank Basically you. for, um, you know, capital um, meetings and... Um, so Patrick, going forward, <clears throat> do we have an action, the actions that must be submitted to the ministry no later than Friday, June 16th, 2023. Do we have right. an action plan? We have um, any action that we've that we've taken so far will be included in that report, as well as um, whatever the township decides um, going forward uh, with hiring a consultant um, would also be included in that um, report to the ministry. So we'd be looking at um, kind of having a, that decision made um, as soon as possible and how the township would like to proceed. Okay, Patrick, one last one, please. <clears throat> so if we cannot lower these rates, uh, these levels, um, what happens as far as the ministry is concerned with our water? Can we still use it? At what point do we get to the, where they say this is not water that we can use? Well, that's uh, that's a question. I don't think I can answer at this time. Um, it's not something that I've I've encountered yet with HAEs. It, it's more, um, you know, we're looking at trying to find solutions, and and there are solutions to to this issue. Um, and I don't think we're quite we're quite there yet, um, where we would say um, that the water isn't isn't safe to drink. I believe that it is safe to drink. Uh, it's the same water that everyone's been drinking for for years. Um, the The issue with the HAs is that this is a new regulation that was introduced um, only several years ago, and uh, it's it's not something that's um, you know just uh, a problem for Horn Pain. It's something that's emerging all over Ontario and and abroad. So um, we we are keeping a close eye on it. And uh, we will work towards um, the goal of uh, eliminating the shit Um and we'll do whatever it takes. 
Sorry, Patrick. Then, if I may, if other communities are having this problem, um, is there discussions going on to between yourselves, between to be able to say, "Hey, we're all having the same problem. What's the solution?" Like, is there sharing of information? Well, I, I believe there there there's always some sharing of information between uh, you know colleagues and, and managers and. Uh, um, consultants and, and engineers and and, and works uh, I mean um, as this is a, an emerging issue this is something that that you know kind of everyone's learning as we go here and uh, I, I, I mean as far as sharing information um, it's still relatively in you know its infancy as far as as far as that goes but I'm sure as time passes um, you know there might be a trend that we might see that um, you know, but I don't think there's a uh, a one uh, solution fixes all um, you know solution, right? This is uh, a lot of times it's uh, site specific. So, thank you very much, Councillor Belinda Kissmaker. Go ahead. The one issue I'm having problems with is if you're having problems with like this with other communities, and we are supposed to decide on a third party for as a consultant which costs money um and i don't get this like um what do we do like should we be joining forces with other communities on this consultant thing or or is it just we're looking at our own community or what well i think the main focus would be on on your own community um I'm not sure of any uh, community sharing information, although I don't see why that would be, you know, I don't see any issue with that. Does that answer your question, Belinda? I'm not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it would be up to us if we wanted to approach other communities, if we wanted to hire a joint consultant to do the work. Um, is there any further questions from council at this time? I do have a few of my own. Okay, Patrick, I just, um, I'm concerned that the levels, when I'm looking at the levels last year, that they were over the 80, the new um, set standard at 80, and that yes. they were over in 2021, and then again in 2022, and I didn't know about it at all. Um, the first I heard about it was the ministry actually notifying us in a letter, which I'm very disappointed in Aqua. I'm going to say that straight out, that uh, the ministry put in new orders at new levels. And even that alone, questioning that, like, why were they doing that? How is it going to affect our area? So um, I would like to have a, a meeting, a sit down meeting with yourself and maybe Patrick Albert as well to discuss this. Sure. And I also, um, when you were talking about the SOPs that were put in place when these, like if there's any types of changes at the ministry level, does not Aqua, it would make sense to me that you would immediately follow suit with new standard uh, procedures to follow up. And I feel like we're now we're, you know, three years in, beyond and now we're at double the rates like the last one's at 160. Mm -hmm. so i'm just wondering when uh councillor shenneman asked about those remediations that, that were taking place were they taking place right away when we're looking at the quarterly results how long have we been looking at the quarterly results with the re remediation measures that you talked about well I mean, as soon as we started seeing high results, um, you know, we started making some changes um, within the plant, um, you know, lowering chlorine, changing pH levels and things like that to try to um, to mitigate those uh, high results. Um, and it seems though, um, regardless of any kind of operational changes that we had made, um, there seems to be, uh, you know, an issue that's, uh, you know, growing. Okay. Uh, another question is with the expertise that you have in your, within your organization, if there's just one person 
do they can they even manage with all the different communities that are going to be looking at consultants well there's there's more than one person for sure it was just something i mentioned um you know there's an individual that was mentioned um but there's definitely more than one person within our organization that um would be able to uh, assist with this matter So if you're looking at needing um, direction from council and with a 16th deadline, we only have the 31st and with the 16th deadline, do we just, we just need to have the consultant hired. We just need to know or have the plan that we are going to hire a consultant. I believe as long as we have a plan to hire, um, there's no um, set date on when the township needs to hire this consultant. Um, it was not put as an order. Um, it is a recommendation. And the Ministry of Health also um, suggested this recommendation during our meeting. Okay. I, uh, I'm just going to have a discussion with council. Please stay online, Patrick, because we'll have probably a few more questions. Absolutely. Uh, I think we have to make a move on this, that there has to be someone hired or we have to look at how we're going to do that. Um, and I'm speaking frankly with you here, Patrick, because I want you to hear it. I'm not sure if Aqua should be the necessarily person. Maybe we should have a third party come in and look and see. And I don't know if there's experts out there. I think we should do our due diligence and reach out to others. What's the timeline we're going to propose? <clears throat> Well, I'm thinking if we have, um, we have to submit by the 16th and we have a meeting on the 14th, if everything was done in the background, that would give us time to reach out to find out if there's other providers, service providers. Uh, um, Patrick, would you know of other um, consultants that could do this work for us? Um, um, we could, I mean, it's possible. Um, you know, maybe with EXP or Stantec, um, <laughs> those type of groups uh, may have someone who um, is familiar with the subject. I mean, it, it might require um, some reaching out um, for sure. Do you know of any other communities that have had this order and had to um, had the recommendation to hire a consultant across the province? Um, not, not within my area. Um, Madam Mayor. Yes, go ahead, Councillor Cash. Uh, Madam Mayor Patrick, um, I, I find that kind of backstepping because you said there were many municipalities that were having this, but you don't know of any. So can you clarify that for us, please? Pardon me? Okay, Sorry, I, I missed previously that. You had said that there were, okay, previously, you had said that there were many municipalities that were going through the same, but then when you were asked, you don't know of any? So well, I don't I don't have, have any I don't yeah, have in, sorry, um just to clarify, in, in the area that I cover, um I don't have any other communities that have been issued an order um to hire a consultant for HAAs. Thank you. Okay, I propose this as an action plan that I want to thank you first and uh, the CAO for meeting with the Ministry of Health right off the bat because that was in the recommendations. And I like to see that that had happened right away. I think we should have a meeting with uh, yourself, Patrick, Patrick Gilbert, and myself. And we could include the Deputy Mayor and the CAO. And if we can get a list of consultants as our provider, our water provider, I think it's uh, your due diligence to provide us with other options for this um, if we want to go with the other consultant. And Absolutely. if we could have that meeting scheduled before the 31st of May so we can have an update for our council meeting, even if it's a verbal update from our CAO about that. Yes, no problem. And, uh, 
Is there anything else that you could suggest to show to the ministry that we are taking everything serious and we're doing proactive steps as we've been informed? Like, is there anything else that you think we should do between now and the 31st to show that we've done those things in our action plan? Well, I think um, what was recommended in the report was, um, you know, the, the updating of the membranes. So we have already started that last year um, and continue to do so. Um, we're just waiting, I guess, for approval for um, those items. And uh, we have, you know, our records, um, you know, from our logbook entries and all that um, of the changes that we've made over, you know, the past year and a half or so um, regarding these uh, increased levels, these elevated levels. Um, and all that will be included in uh, our report to the ministry. Okay. And if council is good with that action plan, and then we'll have a discussion on our May 31st meeting. And that should give us enough time to ensure that it's in for the 16th. Is there any further questions or comments at this time from Council? Okay, and then we will need a draft resolution for our May 31st meeting for if we're going to hire or to ensure that you're empowered to do that, okay? Okay. Um, okay, Patrick, well, thank you for uh, presenting tonight. And um, I'm not sure if you're still there. I can't see. Can you turn your camera back on? Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Thank you for presenting tonight, Patrick. And uh, I look forward to working with, uh, continued working with Aqua, and we'll meet uh, in the near future. Probably just the, I'll probably zoom in, but because uh, I'm traveling, but I would like to have that meeting. Absolutely. And. Absolutely. And as much of the information that you're going to include in that report on the June 16th, if we can have as much of that ready for okay. Mokwa's end as well. Yes, no problem. Okay, great. Thank you, Patrick. You have a good night. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs> okay. If I can get a mover and a seconder to acknowledge receipt of the report, moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, seconded by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain is hereby acknowledge receipt of the Hornpain Drinking Water Inspection Report 2022-2023 as provided by the Ontario Clean Water Agency, Aqua. Those in favour? And that is carried and opposed. Item number 8.2 is our de deliberations for our draft municipal budget, and we have... Um, open public discussion as well tonight. And I'm not sure if we do we have anyone online from the public. No? Okay. I, I see three. Is it all of us that are? Just because we are a bit running a bit late as according to the agenda. And sorry, Mayor. Yeah, I go don't, ahead. I don't believe anybody had asked for the link. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to open the floor first if, um, to our treasurer, if you have anything you'd like to add or, okay. I have got to see if I can use this now. Hey, Council. Questions or comments about the budget?
Well, I guess what I'll do is uh, you'll see if you look at the fourth link, I put in comments to um, a few things. The ones that I want to highlight to council that I would like to have a discussion about is uh, the improvements to the township office. I'd like to start there, even though it's... Uh, so the fire chief had asked for $70,000 for township improvements to our building here, which definitely needs to happen. I went through the building when I first became mayor and we uh, talked about it then and then COVID hit and nothing really happened. And But um, in the comments, I talked about the NOHFC funding that's open right now. There's $200,000 available. In our pre-meeting, we're not quite sure. We have to check to see if it's... Um, the 20 the 10 percent is on 200,000 or if it's on the full um like if it's like 220,000 or if it's 200,000 and that's the cap but either or I think it's a win-win if we were to go for that because what I'm my suggestion to council was that not only do we save 50,000 potentially on that part of the budget um, and we can reallocate re that to someplace else and um, maybe possibly the ball field and the upstairs, when we do go to the arena for the library, I think we need new windows in the offices. I was talking to the staff that uh, I would like to see the economic development office be brought into this building if we can. Um, the other thing I had uh, talked about was the safety, and I brought this issue up before at the council table for staff at the front entrance to have that closed off and that it's um, people can't just walk into the offices. And once the move with the library is complete, we'll be able to lock that side door as well. And there's no side entrance happening either. So I think we, and I think with, um, if we were to spend 70,000 and if we cap out at the 220, we could possibly do the windows and, you know, one, the wall and the door, I'm not sure. And then if we could reorganize offices, it would be up to staff and they can discuss that. But I would like to go after the funds to try and have that happen and prepare ourselves for the future. I don't think it's, we have to make this last us for a few more years. And if it's at 90% funding at 200,000, I think that's a good call until we, find the funds for a new build. So. so those are the comments on that. The other comment that I had was uh, um, about the ice surface, the curling surface and the arena ice surfaces. I think it's imperative that we have a consultation with the Green Municipal Fund and get all our buildings assessed through them. And uh, Ted and I had been at the FCM Sustainable Communities Conference, and they talked a lot about that. And there's, they use, I'm not exactly sure, I've had a few meetings about it, but usually they use the heat loss of the arena and they pump it back in. And your savings pay for your loan amounts. So, and we can get our curling club and the ice surface. And the nice part about it is if we were to go with, I believe it's Baco, not Baco, sorry, that's the highway people. Um, it's slipping me right now, but they will give us the support, the background administrative support to submit the application and they will do all of that for free. And then if we're successful, they come in with their equipment to change it out. And they've done several of these um, changes already. I think, Ted, were you in the luncheon with them when they, they did yes. the one? It's yeah, this Simcoe, Simcoe, eh? Um, yes, yeah. I think it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very much a system where all of the proceeds come back to be able to pay for that and be able to do that. And it has been successful. Um, it's been successful in other provinces. Uh, we certainly should do that. Okay. Okay. Did you have a comment? By no, I was just going to mention that I think it's Simcoe. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I do think we should have uh, further discussions on that. And I, and I feel the, just from reading the report and it was a really well done uh, draft document for the budget and I can feel the weight on there is like what do we do we have all these projects we need to do something so 
I think we all have to put our brains together at this table and make sure that we find the funding to go along with it. Like there's no way that the municipal or pay municipal taxpayer can pay for all the improvements we need. So um, the other comments that I made within the budget were just some uh, line aligning our vocabulary with our strap plan and uh, adding the MSC into the bulk of the body, which uh, should happen as well. And then one other was on page 17, was the distribution of how we collect the revenues from the municipality. I just noted uh, that council doesn't have any revenues sitting there. And I think, and uh, the comment I believe back from the treasurer was that it's up to council on how we want to divide those initially. It's my thought on that is that you can't have um, a municipality without a council. That's an unorganized territory. So there's a by being a municipality, you you have council funds that you have to have. So there has to be a certain percentage of the coffers that immediately go there. So because you can't function without. And that was my comment. So that's up to council. And um, my understanding was uh, to the treasurer, this was um, originally how it was laid out for you. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's it's just a matter of us deciding. And um, we also had a discussion too about councillor budgets. And I think we, and we had talked about this at our last uh, term of council, just to bring Ted up to speed, that we chose the conferences that we were going to go to ahead of time and made sure the budgets were there. But what we're finding is that the budget allocations don't necessarily fit the people because it's the people that are going. So what I was going to suggest is that we cap so we decide how many conferences people are going to go to in a year, like how many conferences this council needs to attend. And then if it's, say, five or four, and it's two people, then that's eight, and then we cap that budget. And then it gets allocated as who is going to the conference so that we're not, that's just a different, I think it may be simpler, and it's a different way of allocating. And we're already passing resolutions for who's going to the budget or the conferences. I don't think there was any other changes in my notes that would change the it was more the just questions but those those first two items were the changes the applying for the F and OHFC dollars and then it would be more long-term planning for the uh, FCM so, so I send it back out to council for discussion go ahead council yeah, I agree with the municipal officer recommendation I would strongly suggest that we make it accessible from the facility ramp into the municipal office because some municipalities I spoke to, a phenomenon, their understanding is by 2025, we'll have to be in compliance. Mm -hmm. That was, it's still unclear. I just, I love to see that. That's why I'm behind 100% on that. Mm -hmm. uh, reclaiming the heat system, that's what it's called. Great idea. Here yeah, it works. I will, I'll let you go first because I, I have the biggest capital expenditures. In my humble view, that refrigeration plan at the Curling Club will not last another season. I've worked there 26 and a half years. We were having difficulties then, that was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, by listening to you and reading the correspondence, it's basically shelf life is done. Mm -hmm. I think that's, or otherwise, that we put it in action, we spend the money to put the ice in, and it breaks down and not repairable, we don't spend our money. For nothing for the guys. So mm -hmm. that that was my biggest capital expenditure. And I read all your comments, everybody else great. But that's my biggest concern. Yeah. Go forth. 
but we say we can't afford it and shut down for next year without the administration and council decision. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest concern. Thank you. Yeah, I think if we were to get on with GMF and have those and get uh, Cisco involved as well, right off the hop and get the application in, then yeah, it, we'd have to do it sooner than later. Because I agree with you. But, yeah. yeah. And through you, Mayor, yeah. to uh, Dwayne, in your humble opinion, do you think it's worth even turning it on in the fall at, at the state it's right now? It's almost eight years. I'm sure we can keep it going for the next year. I don't know how much longer past that. Okay. Thank uh, you. Hey, Treasurer, go ahead. So just in response to a couple of your um, concerns, the NOHFC grant for 90% of municipal buildings are not an eligible expense. And in regards to the Cisco um, cost savings and that scheme, that was all on the last last um, council meeting within the energy audit that was done by jail. Mm -hmm. But that's in the second phase. Yeah. yeah. But we, I'm thinking like we're going to have to do parallel phasing. So, but the municipal buildings are ineligible, you said? <laughs> I don't think that's right. We have a great right here on the screen. The administration space is an office. Okay, did I not give a link to it? Are you talking about the enhance your community thing in the rural? Yeah, it's 200,000 to 90% funding. The eligibility part is just under ineligible costs. The second one is the administration space is an office. Do they ever give allowances for no. Well, that sucks. <clears throat> so is there anything else within our budget that this would fit where we're doing capital improvements so that we can utilize this and then transfer those funds over? I know right now with the housing initiative, we can use some of those funds for the fire department. Is there any other areas in the budget that our uh, council would like changed or that you're looking at like that? I would like to do more research on what funding available we have. 
Go ahead. Um, one that jumped out at me this afternoon was insurance in council, and then we have insurance council, twenty twenty two seventeen hundred and five dollars draft budget, nothing. Um, so I'm not quite sure what would be has that been redesignated into a different spot, or is it, or is there a lack of insurance? Or what? I, just, um, I presented that when I was saying help presented the budget. That right now it's all allocated in um, administration, okay. and then it'll get redistributed. Okay, thank you, sir. No, thank you for your question, Councilor. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? So we're looking at four percent increase, and as it stands right now, I'm uh, we're looking at. 70,000 in capital improvements for this building, which I would like to see more happen. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, I don't think it's probably around the table that it's something that we're, we're satisfied with the 4%, but one of the alternatives, I think that's the point is that at least when I've looked and said, where can we what can we do with my inexperience? I don't know where we could do any serious cutting to be or remodifying to be able to do that. So although 4% isn't something any of us I don't think would like to see, I don't know what the alternative would be. So that's just a only thing. Thank you, Councillor Shannon. Councillor Scott, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor for you. It's worthy to know the municipality surrounding it. Just look at it as a benchmark. Um, I looked at about 50 municipalities. Um, they're between 4.2% and 6.9% increase uh, for various reasons. So I think we're within that, you know, if you have 40 percent so everybody else. But as you said, it's a necessity for our budget at the moment. And I don't see a two, three, but it just I don't think it, I don't think it's being accurate to come in less than four percent because. If you, have a, if you have a breakdown, you'll be paying for it, and we can jump it back to 4%. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Okay, then we're prepared to have a final budget brought to the council table on May 31st. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. So, I'm just wondering if council could um, go through the key items that I set up for council's consideration and provide staff direction on all the all the Well, some of them, if uh, some of them will be answered if you are going with the four percent increase. Sorry, which page are they on? Yeah, um, it's on page fifty six. Some of them don't directly relate to the municipal levy. I am on the wrong document because I don't have 56 capital budget. Mayor, can you read them out then? It's not, like, is that, is that that there's about 20 items? But, um, this, Oh, on the first budget. Sorry, I was on your. No. So oh, they're also in in this one. If you want to look at that one, and that's uh, oh, those ones aren't numbered. Are they? No, they're not. <laughs> um, so it starts on page seven. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I think the first six points are covered if um, council's prepared to go for four percent increase. So just right at the long term loan, additional long term loan for fire department goes uh, one, two, three, four, five. The last seven items. <laughs> You know what I'm going to propose? I'm going to propose that we um, that we have this as a second discussion on the 31st. Because I'm not prepared right now to give loans and my gut's telling me to wait. So if council is, um, will defer until the 31st and can we set, I think we have extra time. We don't have extra time on that meeting, though, right? Is it, would that still be okay to pass it on the 14th, yep. even though we're not here? Yeah, well, but just have the document prepared and um, you know, it helps have all, everything that needs to Okay. Is that uh, good with yeah, council? That. Yeah, okay. And is there anyone online? Because there is public uh, consultation available. I don't think we have anybody. There's no one here. So I'm shutting that down. And uh, there's no one. Okay, moving on to 9.1, manager's report. First report, CAO report. Do you want to speak to your report, Arlene? Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to add to my report uh, that we have hired a new casual, uh, I believe it's the new administrative position, um, and we've hired uh, Tiffany Ladowski mm -hmm. in that position. And I don't believe I have anything else to add, but I can take any questions from council. Any questions on the report for the CAO? Councilor Stan, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just uh, like to report. Thank you. I'm just looking at drinking water distribution system up here, Third Avenue. Um, any updates on that? Uh, it's on. It's on this agenda, so it's for uh, council's review and comment and input um, uh, for the next two weeks after today. Yeah. Yeah. June first, Saturday. Yeah, May eighteenth to June first. I just wanted to mention that okay. you've been working on it in the background, and now it's. For yeah. Council Radio. Yeah, no problem. So you had mentioned, or go ahead, Councillor Bowen to kiss Can you remind me who that is? Uh, they were five points, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. They changed their name? I think so, yeah. Okay. Sure I, the background what about that memo? Okay. <laughs> changed. Thanks. Hmm. Any further questions? I just want to highlight that Eileen did tell me that the scope of uh, for the change for the ISIP was submitted. Yes, and that was yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, we were going to mention that under the EDO's uh, uh, report. <laughs> okay, but yeah, it has. It was just recently submitted. Okay, and then I was uh, just wanted to highlight to council that I did bring up with staff about um, the spectrum donation, about putting up a sign, and that we wanted to look at our past procedures. That just because we've had other donations in the past, and I think of both the twenty department and what we were doing with that, so um, we had a good discussion, and I think they'll handle it well. So. Yeah. And those are all my questions or comments. Okay, moving on then to the client service manager treasurer. Do you have anything to add to your report, Melissa? No, I don't. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? There being them, we'll move on to the public works manager's report. Dwayne, do you have anything to add to your report? Sure, yes, uh, we did a we did, we had two things scheduled the other day, again, including one successfully. The second one was postponed due to the guy who came to do the repair. Class experience that we need a lot more equipment to do the second repair. I guess the water table and water flow under, underground is quite substantial. 
He's talking like two bumper trucks and a couple of pumps. Last time we did it, they almost lost the highway. Where was that doing? I'm Leslie. Uh, I joined the 17, right between the Alarm Ridges and the Chris Ward's. Okay. Last time they lost half the highway. Uh, half the highway trying to keep under control. Wow. And so that's going to be scheduled for when? We're going to figure it out. Okay. We'll get all the equipment organized and we need a bigger excavator to a longer reach. Is there even two pumper trucks in the area? Yeah, we're going to need a, like a 360 or a Provost big uh, hydro back and Cobes truck. <clears throat> Okay, and when are you hoping to have it done by? As soon as possible. Just trying to organize it. Okay. It's better throttle down, but it's definitely a building. Okay. Thank you, Duane. Any other questions, Council Staff? Yeah, Mayor Mayor Dwayne. So I'm assuming because it's scope for the worthless, worthless contract, and, <clears throat> and you just explained because of the equipment that's required. In the size of pipe we were uh, working with, that one of the highways a bigger pipe that we were able to handle. Okay. So, so that we figured it broke behind the valve uh, with the uh, hydro saddle and the pipe. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, go ahead, Council Mayor Dwayne. And in this report, it says more than the average number of frozen culverts this year. <clears throat> Would that partially be attributed to the, the private snow plowing that is filling those culverts in the ditches to the point that it is that partly like we have to get that under control? I, I see the roads getting narrower and and this pushing the snow onto the, the property where it shouldn't be. Is that would that be partly attributed to that? I would say that wouldn't be a major factor. Mm -hmm. Just the type of winter we had. Even though push roads are closed and all the things. It's just a weird winter and there's layers. The guys with layers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shannon. I don't have any questions. Any further comments or questions? There being none, we'll move on. Economic Development Officer Report. Stacey, do you have any comments or questions or, uh, to your report? Uh, we'll okay. okay. Council, do you have questions for the economic development officer? Go ahead, Councilor Stone. Yeah, thank you. And for you, uh, the pavilion requires uh, um, 90% complete. So we still have work to do on the CTRM. Grant, the ISIP is complete. We just have to do a report. In August, the CCRF is still standing. Thank you. It works great. Real asset to our community. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Councilor Shannon. You can say the, the, the new public, the washroom and facility, uh, where does that fall in? Sorry, I'm newbie to this. So, where does that fall in? That's in the CCRF. Right? So, that's the federal grants. We still have some outstanding. So, we, we have pretty water to the site. Uh, we have an electrician scheduled to do the electrical there. Uh, there's a roof and then the inside of the building, all the equipment been purchased. So that thank you. Do we have a proposed timeline of when you'd like to have it completed? Um kind of we can get it all um the uh, electrician was supposed to start in the next two weeks. will start three weeks ago. <laughs> so, yeah, the mills and let's say go soon. Oh, okay. So we're hoping that summer everything will be totally complete, including the recording for the five grant. Okay. That is of those models? Yep. Yeah. Any further questions? Comments? Okay, you're getting them. I get a mover and a seconder to acknowledge receipt to move by Councillor Drago Spence, second by Councillor Peter Kissinger, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Farmpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. Those in favor? None have carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to action items. 
Okay, uh, 10.1 is, um, is a training. This was uh, sent to me by Eileen a while back, and I said I can't go because I'm at FCM, but I thought it might be something council would be interested in, so we put it on the docket. And I just need clarity. If, if we don't want to do anything with it, do we even have to use the resolution or anything? Um, I'm, I'm not sure we do have to do something with it. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So I'm a mover and a seconder and then we can defeat it or, uh, even if someone's on there. Mm -hmm. Moved by Councillor Belinda Kissmaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenneman. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Cornfield does hereby approve the expenditures to be incurred by the following to attend the expertise for municipalities. 4EM, Head of Council of Leadership Roundtable, which will be held at the Delta Hotel in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario from Thursday, May 25th to Friday, May 26th, 2023. Is there anyone that would like to attend that? Unavailable. Okay, everyone is unavailable. So we'll just uh, put that to a vote, those um, voting to defeat, and that's defeated. Okay, moving on to 10.2, Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities. Is there a support resolution for this? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Okay, is this a support resolution that council would like to bring to our table? We could have it on the 31st. Go ahead. Yeah, you may we discussed this quite in depth at the phenomenon. I would highly recommend that we uh, look at this endorse it. The uh, majority of municipalities that were there already have endorsed it. Okay. Thank you. There is a... We'll bring it back to the 31st. Okay. 10.3 uh, Aqua operational plan. Oh, sorry. Ahead. I yes. just wanted to add something to you. 10.2. Uh, the motion isn't, oh, sorry. The motion isn't passed yet. It's a draft that's going to put on. So the, I guess the resolution on here. Right. But okay. do we want to do a support resolution? Okay. Yes. So we're we'll going to do back on yeah, our support resolution. <laughs> Okay, so we have the Ontario Clean Water Agency uh, operational plan. Did we get clarification on all of this when we were discussing in the meeting? We had quite a, at our agenda meeting, we had a quite a, a discussion about this, the signing this uh, piece of paper. Uh, And uh, what was it? Sorry, what was it, uh, Mayor Fort, that you wanted? That you were? This is what uh, this is an agreement that um, council just needs to, right? Is that what the question is? No, it was this one here that we had a few conversations about because it was the change, the scope of change, why we were signing the commitment, because I had thought it was the, the renewal. And then we had a bit of a discussion on it. Oh, this thing uh, I believe, I think we said we could counsel if they would want it to bring it back, it could go into a closed session to discuss. Okay. Is that what we were talking about? I think so, yeah. Just a second. Sorry, counsel. Yeah, go ahead. it's really directly to you. So you're telling me you don't feel comfortable signing? That's what you're driving at? Yeah, well, we when we first when it first came, I thought it was our operational plan mm -hmm. because within our aqua plan, we have years where we signed back off, right? So I thought it was that, but it's not. It's actually a change. And then we were looking down at the bottom of it. It has in February of 2023, the 23rd uh, uh, this year, a new endorsement sought. And we didn't know exactly what that was. And then it refers to this paper, which Melissa pointed out. We were having quite a discussion about this whole document mm -hmm. that we didn't know exactly what it was. So we were like, uh, we needed the um, plan to find out what the change was. 
and uh, so we can endorse the revision. And we, there was no attachment other than this was received, right? Yeah, it was just this. Yeah. So yeah. If, if yeah, if council wants to bring it back and close to review, then the agreement essentially. Yeah. And go ahead. Yeah, I would uh, suggest because if it's unknown to you, it's certainly unknown to me. Yeah. Uh, because you're right. I know the previous years there was a standard contract that the mayor and CEO signed off on, and it's included in the agenda as well. I see. Maybe it's worth to talking to both districts to see, uh, get it from straight from them because I mean, it could be have an administration and, and yourself meeting, but I think you have to go to the source and ask them why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This it, technically, this should be improved by through you to the council. And if you feel not comfortable, well, I'm not going to be approved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I sense now that you're not. Yeah, well, I just didn't have all the information, so I wanted to know what's changed. So I would suggest maybe yeah. talk to both Patrick's. Yeah, well, we can include it on yeah. our meeting with them yeah. and then bring it back There's to council. Suggestion. And do I have councils, um, if, if it is a just a minor change upgrade, I'll sign off and bring it back to council for an update on the 31st? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's authorized mayor sign endorsement. So does council feel, uh, well, I'll put the motion on the floor and then we can discuss. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Drago Stefanik. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Farmington does hereby authorize the mayor and the CAO clerk to sign the commitment and endorsement section of the Ontario Clean Water Agency's Quality and Environmental Management System, QEMS, and operational plan for the Horn Pain Water Treatment Facility and Distribution System attached on behalf of the municipality. And... Do we want to give that acknowledgement now? And you know that I'm going to be having a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So those in favor? And that is carried. Okay. Moving on to uh, support for the school bus arm. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenneman. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation, the Township of Hornbein, does hereby support the resolution of the Council of the Municipality of South Huron and the resolution of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth and their request <coughs> for the provincial government to require all school buses to have stop arm cameras installed and paid for by the province for the start of the 2023 2024 school year and be underwrite the cost for implementation and ongoing annual cost for administrative monetary penalties in small and rural municipalities. Be it further resolved that the resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Downey, Attorney General, the Honourable Stephen Lecce, Minister of Education, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the Municipality of South Huron, and the Municipality of Perth. And I put this on the floor. I did have one uh, recommendation is that we add in addition we forward it to the Ontario Good Roads Association because they're actually doing work on this as well. Yeah. So yeah. if I can make that addition. Yeah. Okay. And go ahead. Yeah, I think this is uh, utmost crucial. Speaking to the bike drivers, even in, in our community for last visit, I do occasionally there. And even going back when I was a trustee, 25 years, we had people, local people passing the bus. Well, this, and this is facts now. I spoke to the bike drivers as recently as a year ago. I also know for a person in Timmins uh, that drives Erica Falls to Timmins, and that is a major issue. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's becoming a bigger issue. So I think this is vital, and I agree with Old Terry Roads as well to be part of the, uh, the thing. Okay, Thank great. You. Yeah, we had uh, stats. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but they're appalling at the amount of people that go by the school bus when it's stopped with the lights on and they yeah. put the upgraded lights now, they have the amber and then to alert you that they're going to be stopping and it's yeah. just appalling the amount of people that still just don't stop like, yeah. or don't even notice in some cases. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, if there's no further discussion, we'll put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, item number 10.5, request for support. <clears throat> I have to give hats off to the town of uh, Fort Erie. 
So if I can get a mover and a seconder, please move by Councillor Drago Spanik, second by Councillor Peter Eastmaker. Whereas Council received correspondence from the Town of Florida area on dated April 26, 2023, regarding changes, changing the municipal oath of office to include clear reference to the rights of Indigenous peoples, and whereas call to action 94 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada called upon the Government of Canada to replace the wording of the oath of citizenship to include the recognition of the laws of Canada, including treaties with Indigenous peoples, and whereas on June 21st, 2021, and oh, sorry, on June 21st, 2021, an act to amend the Citizenship Act received royal assent to include clear reference to the rights of Indigenous peoples aimed at advancing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action within the broader reconciliation framework. Framework And whereas the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada outlines specific calls to action for municipal governments in Canada to act on, including education and collaboration. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby support the Town of Fort Erie's request to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing that the following changes be made to the Municipal Oath of Office. I will be faithful and true, true, bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III and that I will faithfully observe the laws of Canada, including the Constitution, which recognizes and affirms the Indigenous and treaty rights of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Be it further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and the Town of Fort Erie. Any further comment or discussion on that support? Go ahead, Councillor Stack. Simply said, I agree 100%. Thank you. Okay, those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, food cycler waste program. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shinneman. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of Hornpain does hereby agree to submit a letter of support for the food cycler science application to stage three of the food waste reduction challenge. And Eileen, did you want to comment on this at all? Or? Um, uh, uh, just other than I, you know, the I can draft the letter and give it to them by tomorrow morning, just because they need it as soon as possible. And um, I've read the letter and I support it. So I don't know if that means anything to council, but <laughs> yeah, it, definitely, it definitely does. Yeah, yeah it does. Go ahead, Councillor Smith. Well, that's your letter that you put down a draft in our uh, portfolio that you, that you have written. The, dra the draft May is the 10th. May 10th. That's yours. The May 10th? Yes. 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 That's yours. I yes. Okay. I, I agree with the content. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said yes to. May 10th, 2023. No, I don't listen to you. Thank you. I hope we can stay yes, on May 17th. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, any further comment on that? Okay, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried and opposed. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. You're welcome. Okay. A mover and a seconder for 10.7. Moved by Councillor Drago Stefanik, second by Councillor Ted Shanneman. Be a result of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Foreign Pain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the acknowledgement of notice of commencement for the land expansion project as provided by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation Parks, MECP. And was there any further discussion on this item? This is just routine basically now from our consultants, right? Yeah, and I can advise that um, there's no action needed on this from the township. This is just information that was sent to the consultant to, by the ministry. And um, it just, when they submit the notice of commencement, it triggers ME, MECP to send the FN consultation list to the consultant. Um, and he said it's just pretty much boilerplate, uh, boilerplate process. So... There's nothing that we need to do on our end or anything out of the ordinary. Okay, any further discussion on that council? And that is uh, up for a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, 10.8. I asked Eileen to put this on the agenda because it asked for a request for, uh, request for involvement for the NWMO. And um, I just wanted councils approval and recognition if we want to do this. Go ahead, Councilor. So you'll be addressing this issue, correct? That's, That's right. Yeah. yeah, if you have the time, I, I 
agree with you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Yeah, I have no problem doing it. I just wanted to know who to know. And, and if you have any discussion you want to have, you can have one on one discussion with me and let me know. And I'll follow up with to get me included. Okay, 10.9. And this is, uh, I'll let you speak to it, Eileen. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the draft uh, request for proposal from the consultants, and uh, the first link there is the actual uh, draft RFP, and then the appendices are attached um, below that. And uh, council, if they could review it, and they have till from May 18th to June 1st to provide any comment, input, um, feedback uh, during that time, and they can send it to me directly at is there anything within it that you are looking for actual comment on or just overall comment? I would just be general overall comment if anything stands out to council at all. So. Okay. Does council have any other further comments or questions about that? You can reach out to Eileen personally if you need anything in the comment period. Okay, 10.10. I cannot remember what we discussed in, oh, this was for, right. This is us, we, we're going to have to fill this out. This is for information. You can speak to it. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, after speaking with Mayor Fort, um, Essentially, we want a direction from council to advise that they wanted us to proceed with it, uh, but we are going to proceed with it and pro provide them the information that they need. Um, and in the future, this will just go under info only for our next time. Okay, so we're at 10.11, the request for delegations for AMO. Any thoughts from council? Councillor Jerry, go ahead. We discussed uh, approximately 49 minutes ago the upgrade of the uh, municipal office and into the uh, might be a uh, uh, infrastructure. I you will certainly know your contacts, um, Mayor Fort. Uh, I think that'd be a good time to approach that issue. It's a new issue. It's not same old run of the mail. It's not the hallmark. It's not the road. It's some different. So they might you might catch on. Mm -hmm. Being there. Okay, well, Councillor Kissmaker, you'd be good to meet. Mm -hmm. Eileen. Okay. Any other comments? I do have two. Um, I think we did have some sort of uh, mall update with uh, Minister Rickford, even what we have going like it, just what we've done uh where it's at if anything comes about because we're still in the process waiting to own the building and the lawyers and then the other one that uh, i had suggested was possibly doing um one to the ministry i wasn't sure which one it was at the meeting for the scope change and just thanking them and uh really doing a um a thank you that this is what we we have to do this because we increase pricing but luckily we can still use the funds that sort of thing but i do we find out which ministry it was uh no i'm just looking for the province of supporting that go ahead yeah. infrastructure would be okay. you're gonna have to come to our meetings too <laughs> Well, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to um, know that we had a meeting with the impact this afternoon and we asked about who uh, oversees the assessment at it and they confirmed that it's the Minister of Finance. Oh, finance, okay. Okay. And why did we need to know that? Um, um, refresh we were going to reach out to somebody and ask them about the assessment. Oh, yes. Assessment, um, when they're going to do the assessments. Yes. That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So is there any other one, Council? So we could do, so the NOHFC, that would be with the mall with um, Minister Rick Bird and Northern Development. And then uh, the Ministry of Infrastructure with the scope change. And I highlighted in our meeting that this would not, I don't want to, I want to praise the, the staff at, uh, that they, our staff has been working with and really just highlight that, you know, we're, we're trying to overcome this challenge that's been, you know, put, put on us with the rest of the province because of COVID and the increases, but we still want to move forward. Yeah. So, and if, and if we have a scope change by then, it'll just be a celebration and handshake and a thank you. So, mm -hmm. okay. So do we need anything? Do you need anything further for that, for that direction, Eileen? Or? Um, I think I'm good for now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have when is it June something? June the annual conference? Uh, oh, the, the delegation requests. We have one more meeting on the the thirty first. If you need any okay, yeah. clarification. Okay, so if there's no further comments on that, we'll move on. And it's uh, correspondence information only. If I can get a mover and a seconder for that package, please. Moved by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenneman. Be resolved that the Council of Corporation, the Township of Farmfield, does hereby acknowledge receipt of correspondence information only package attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, May 17, 2023. And is there any comments on the information only package? No. Did you have any comments on this, Eileen? Sorry, I can't remember, and I don't have any notes on this. Uh, I did want to make a comment about 11.2, which is the uh, offer quarterly report. Um, you'll notice, or you may have not noticed, but in this report, uh, and moving forward, uh, offer will include the HAA numbers um, in these reports. Good. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Stan. Uh, uh, through you, to the uh, valid comment. Uh, I used to read those reports thoroughly, not lately, because it's so technical that you have to basically be a chemist. As you mentioned in our uh, virtual meeting, I don't want to support as much as you were. It is their job to notify us mm -hmm. if there's a problem. We could have read the report, even if it was there year ago, I wouldn't catch it. Mm -hmm. That's a fact, and I'm being brutally honest. Mm -hmm. And I mean, of course, this thing, and you read it, you, you look at the flow and you know all those simple things I understand, but it's so complex that they should highlight the, the challenges, the problems to us as administration council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you, Drago. And I know that in the past, when we've looked at the reports, because I've had questions about the flow, trying yes, to understand it, and there was never any indication, and obviously it wasn't because we weren't getting reporting on them, of it happening. So it's just, it's concerning when it's our water, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Councillor Kissmaker. When you're talking about that, like they have a JA tracking now in here. Mm -hmm. So we, we now know that we should be watching that. However, we weren't told that it was an issue, we would still not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, going forward, it's an issue. It's well, an issue we, have our, we have our standard of care um, water uh, training, and those yeah. would be good questions to ask. Like, are there other things? Like, what exactly should we be following, right? Following, yeah. And knowing what we're, what the guidelines are. Uh, was there anything else? I don't know. There's nothing else. No, nope, just a second. I have no. And then they're not for that. They're for that. Okay, so I'll put that uh, acknowledge receipt to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Item 12 is committee and board updates. So 12.1, you see my list of meetings there. I just want to highlight uh, this time now. I, it's sad that the public's not on. There is quite a bit happening in the background with the hotel. 
Um, I have been keeping the HHC board updated regularly because that's where our investment stream went at that board level. Um, they are he uh, they are going to be having an investors meeting sometime in the early June. They uh, there should be work happening next week or the following early the following week, setting where the piles are going to go. And um, and there's been quite a bit of correspondence in the background between our staff and uh, where where it needs to be. Nothing, I don't think, over the top or anything. But um, I did receive a few phone calls about uh, you know chatter that's happening in the community. But as your mayor, I asked uh, Mr. Cohen three times to do regular media releases. We, we I sent a letter from the HHC, like I can't control people. And the thing is in, in a city, I don't think this is unusual, like the way that they're building, like they bought the land, they bought other properties, they're doing what they're doing, they changed the scope. So it's frustrating. I, I'm hopeful that some of the chatter will stop once we see some action happening there, but I just don't want you to think that in the background, I haven't had any discussions or been reaching out and uh, and I think part of the song that was made and uh, there's another video that should come out it was shared with the HHC board where um, Ben Cohen is talking with Evan Schenkel the new general manager so they've they've changed direction that way as well so they have a new general manager out of um, the Winnipeg area Manitoba area so so anyway, and they are supposed to have an update coming out. So, but really, from our perspective as a municipality, I don't think it's our business in the sense of or the staff to be putting out media releases on behalf of a developer. Like it's so, and if and if council, I would encourage you. I believe I didn't get time to look. I wanted to look before, but I think the phone number is right on the sign. Is it not? Is there not a phone number to call them? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to go check because that's my response. <laughs> call the number. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't do anymore. I'm sorry, but like, I'm going to keel over. <laughs> but uh, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you brought that up. I was asked that question now. Really started by many citizens, ratepayers, taxpayers since April. Because the last release is, and I know, and it's being honest again. Mm -hmm. April 3rd, the shovels are in the ground, and, and I said, you know, usually it's the developer or the mayor will take the lead. That's the two people that are, and you know, that's what Jackie told them. I said, I also don't have any more information, but I said, I will bring that to the next council meeting. Now I'm glad you discussed it. And I agree with you, it is the developers that are developing this facility that should, we're different than our city. People like to know. They walk by they drive by it and they don't see any action because it said April 3rd or whatever. Mm -hmm. And because it was delayed twice already, people are skeptical. And I understand. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I really, I really am because uh, hopefully uh, the developer, uh, this small release, really just sort of small expose was happening. Mm -hmm. I think that, that will satisfy most people's uh, queries and questions. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. I want to see it built just like the rest of them. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the sooner the better. Um, so I am heading off to FCM next week. So if there's anything that you want me to look into, if you want to look at the agenda, please let me know and I will do that. Um, item 12.2 is, uh, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Drago Spanik, second by Councillor Ted Chenneman. Be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Cornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the board and committee meeting minutes attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. And those are the Hornpain Public Library Board minutes. Any comments on those minutes? And the Neoma minutes. Any comments on those minutes? Okay, there being none, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, 12.3 is Council Committee updates. And after we're done this, we're going to take a short break. Yeah. Oh, yes, Sorry. go ahead. I, 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 I was Sorry. just going to say, if you could, whenever, um, remind Council about the standard. Of yeah, I have that. Yeah, I'm going to do that one. Sure. Okay, Peter. 
Councilor Kistemaker, go ahead. I have nothing to add at this moment. Nothing to add, okay? We're going to give you work. <laughs> nothing to add. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to look at my list and delegate. News me is the Hotel 6. Yeah. <laughs> be the new direct contact. There will be a lot of work all of a sudden. <laughs> no, it's all right. Thank you, Councilor Kistemaker. Councillor Shenman, go ahead. No, I have nothing to report this week. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Belinda Kissmaker. I don't have anything at this time. Okay. Councillor Gary Wisterman. Real quick, BHU Finance and Committee meeting coming up virtual. BHU Board of Health coming up. I like the board meeting coming up as well. Uh, it was a phenomenal, very good conference. I will have a full report for Council. I can mind exactly. What happened is there was no breakaway groups. It was all large. Oh. You know, you know, yeah, really, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah I saw that. Bobby Center. Bobby Center. There was no ice there with Bobby Doors Center. And uh, <laughs> they were on, they would discuss school board elections. Uh, okay. We are being, say, for example, we were all at late. However, if there was an election for the school board, we would have to provide a cost, our staff, and the board, the cost is borne by the municipality, not the board of education. So we were hoping as a, as a phenom uh, members. So and uh, bail reform, it was really scary because the person spoke. One person was off uh, forty eight times on bail reform and was committing these acts. By the time police officer writes, he's around fifteen minutes or later. Uh, federal government just made some announcement uh, three days ago, but it's still not strong enough. Uh, is Cash and release, that's what they call it. Mm. They go in, they go out, and it continues, uh, especially the violent criminals. It's a big issue. And the other one, we discussed virtual health care challenge, uh, and that will be brought up out in full uh, into my report. People should be, it should be in your hands, uh, just like that Friday before the meeting. Uh, okay, also. and when does the health care challenge start? It, it's, it's all these, the, all these uh, resolutions have been put through forth by the phenom. Oh, okay. but I will follow up to what is in touch with what was discussed because it's in, those are the three key ones. Okay, okay. And this is not a committee report, but since I was coming from there, it's a committee report. Yeah, me. oh, yeah. From Highway 11 to Nagagami Seas, I drove in on May 11th, May 11th, okay, May 11th, to Nagagami Seas, 68 bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I had a person in Secretary of State deciding to make <laughs> notes. Nine graders. I stopped by one. It was approximately two and a half feet by a foot and a half, seven and a half inches deep. So, Mayor would respect the request, make some calls. Like, that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Daytime, I was going to 40. Even if I was going 40 at nighttime, there's no way you're going to miss some of them because uh, it, is, uh, it, it is alarming to me. It's unsafe. And the second part into our community, there's also not as many craters, but I'm told it's going to be repaired. I get it. However, meanwhile, there's still potholes. So we're going to wait till the contractor goes on site. And, no, let, let's, it's, I think it's health and safety issue, in my humble opinion. Because mm -hmm. at the time, you have to drive 35, 40 it, 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 it was It was scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we have the number of where people like residents can call of where you report for highway safety? 2020. 2020. <laughs> no, no, not us. No, no. No, because I think that would be something that I could do. I can do on CFNO and say, look at this is an issue that came to the table and we could do that. Go ahead. Dwayne. Oh, sorry, Dwayne. MQ is on the site. You can actually have a number you can call. MTO, but where people can call in, call, okay, report. report. Vehicle damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and supplement to that here. Yeah. Uh, five years ago, the roads were horrendous during winter time, and should be in the files here. Um, the that time mayor suggested we had the four of the people fill out, which I designed. They came in and they filled the form out. You see that the road conditions were horrendous in winter time, and that was the one copy was to us, and one copy was mailed directly to the ministry as well to the company. It worked really well. There was a lot of quite a response. Well, five years ago, but I'm not sure the same number that is for summer, but that was for winter. It should be here in the records. 
Oh, okay. And it was a good response by the public. Uh, and there was no fault of the people that, that were maintaining it. It was how often they were allowed to maintain the operator. So it was a company that was running the show. And uh, there was some improvements. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, go ahead. And just uh, through you, Madam Mayor, just keep in mind that counts as the fact we are at the end of the service life of that highway, 631 North, and uh, talking to everybody, truck drivers at, at where I work, it's like that everywhere. This was, as uh, Dwayne alluded to earlier, an extraordinarily yeah. crazy winter. Like the thaws and the, and the, and the freeze and thaw, freeze, it was just people had water in their houses that never had it before. It was, it was just one of those unique winters, and I agree with you, it's terrible. You need an off road vehicle to go out there, but they are working on it, and none of the resources takes, takes time. A lot of that work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Kistemaker Belinda. All these things that are coming up. The way everyone's talking and the way these letters that we want to issue and all this kind of stuff will help make cases going forward on doing something bigger for our highways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll check with the website and I'll uh, get that number. And I can definitely talk with Al about that on CFNO as well. And... Uh, I'll update the council on May 31st. Okay, any other further updates? Um, the only other update I have besides um, is I just want to give an update as the board for the HHC. I apologize it's not written. There will be a package coming from the HHC for all the minutes because really by our, our bylaws, we should have done the packages regularly the minute should be coming and then there should have been a package last june an annual package so this year we will have a package we did uh we're in between administrators right now due to a relocation and it was sad to see our administrator go um we do have interviews um tomorrow night and kindly eileen has uh agreed to chair um not chair to uh, secretary our meeting for us so i appreciate that eileen and um, so, and we do have uh, people that have applied and uh, we're working readily right now with the auditors to ensure that our end at the Municipal Service Corp is um, all in line for our submissions for the end of May 31st, for the end of this month. And hopefully that will be done by, I'm hoping Monday or Tuesday of next week. I'm talking on tomorrow. And uh, I'm, uh, it's been a lot of work. I want to extend the thank you to Belinda because she's come and saw me a couple of times. Well, and uh, it's been a bit of a, um, an unusual event because uh, the chair usually doesn't go into the weeds that way, but we yeah. were, we had no recourse and we, we had no one there and we still have to collect rents and you still have to. So I will just for councils, uh, uh, notification. I will be giving a conflict of interest when all of the paperwork and everything submitted. All the work that I've done on QuickBooks, it has been outlined under my own name that you can see it, all that I've made my own profile. So all of that will be transparent. And then I will totally just declare a conflict for any decisions or things made. And, um, and yeah, so we'll move that way. I hope to never have to endure this again. <laughs> but uh, um, and I think in the moving into the future, it would be good to know a list of uh, support staff, I guess, that are not within our staff that we could call on because uh, there's a need in our community for that. I think so. Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. I want to wrap my head around this. So the person that means are not important to me. The work wasn't completed. Yeah, we had, uh, there'll be a full report. Oh, so yeah. in our we'll first, um, I can update right now. Okay. Our, so our first, I think, you know, it was a new adventure from the get-go, right? Taking over, doing an MSC, first of all, mm -hmm. but then a housing corp. And I am glad we're all focused on housing at the board. Like there's things that we want to do that and, uh, and want to see done to diversify our stock. So that's good. It was the... Um, just the, you know, starting off the starting block didn't, you know, didn't really 
know as much property management. We hired a project manager in hindsight. You know, hindsight's 2020 all the time. Maybe we should have looked at hiring a property manager and not a project manager, right? And then that would have put things in line because it was really a wholesome project. So I don't, uh, I think it was a learning curve on all of our parts. And, and, uh, and then <clears throat> when we hired the new person, it was onboarding and then it just wasn't enough time, right, to get everything situated right and well in that short period that our last administrator was with us we were able to do like pet policies um uh a rent collection policy and yeah there was other policies put okay. in place so thank you and i can't remember what there was oh smoking we did some smoking and we're having cannabis issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting and our meetings are open so you can come <laughs> Oh, no, no, I don't have any. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, gosh. Oh, thanks for the laugh. That was good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm thinking it won't be the 31st. Uh, we'll onboard. Uh, hopefully, the, the new person can start for the 30th, and then I can help onboard with them. And then um, I'm thinking the June 27th meeting or the first or meeting in July. That's when the package will come from the HHC once everything's been updated. And if you have any questions about that, you're welcome to ask me. No? Okay. Go ahead. In every report, may I? I'm not yes, sure you I'm are. Yes, I, you can. When I saw real with costs, my eyes blew up. Would you refer to the costs that you spent on the board for the railway crossings? Yes. Was there any action done on it? No. Nope. The still not. Room. Everyone's still going through the process. Okay, thank the you. Process is forever. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we'll take a break now for. Um, Oh, I think until eight o'clock. I can't see the time. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah, we'll go till eight o'clock. So we got an eight-seven minute break, and uh, I need a coffee.
mention that I forgot to mention during my committee updates. Uh, are we recording? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to follow up. Um, so on the June 27th, we have training for the standard of care uh, in White River from two to five. And we do need to take the essentials of fire, the fire course and uh, essentials of fire management, I believe it's called. Anyway, just a second. I have a, I have the, I was prepared for this and I can't remember anything. Okay, so um, originally it was scheduled to be either May 16th or the 30th, and they can't do that for us now. So, and it is an evening course in White River. And what I'm suggesting is if council, why don't we all do it in one day and do the standard of care in the afternoon, two to five, we can break for supper, and then we can uh, have the fire essentials that evening and I had suggested that they had a 6 30 or 7 start time I had suggested that we ask for a 6 30 start time so we're not driving too back too late because the it's two and a half hours long the fire essentials and okay this is June the 27th mm -hmm. And if we can get back to Eileen with your dates if it's if you can make that day by uh, June the 1st. It's a Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. And the the water one, I really would uh, encourage everyone to go. If you so. have taken it in the past, but I think we should, uh, and, and Ted, I believe you actually need to, eh? Like the, the requirement. Mm -hmm. But I, I've already uh, submitted that I will be going. So if Council is in agreement. We'll um, ask for the 27th for the fire essentials as well. Are you committed to that? Yeah? We've got three yeses out there. Uh, what will the times be? Uh, be right uh, we'd have to be there for two o'clock in the afternoon. So for the start of the water, the water um, <laughs> standard of care. Okay. Uh, I'll put in for that. Okay, and then we'll we'll we haven't been able to set up the fire essentials yet, but I thought that would be the best. And Eileen agreed. And yeah, and I can I just need to let White River know, and I need to let Brian Mack you know, and then it's good to go. They said whatever date you pick, they will ensure that they do the fire essential course because they couldn't do it the first time. Um, and we had chosen the dates and they said that was fine the first time and then we got a no. And so he said, whatever date council picks, it will be a go no matter what. Yes. Okay. And go ahead, Councillor Stanley. Yeah, sorry. I took the standard uh, care just when the COVID started three years ago, virtually. It was done from Walkerton. It was superb. It was three hours. It was actually flew by like 10 minutes. I and it was available online. Yes, it was. It, it was great. The speaker was dynamic. We interacted. It, it, that was the last, but I looked up a certificate actually. Okay. So I, I still want to go for the wall, and I will be no need for me for a fire protection service. I just came back. And yes, you just I came, gave yes. a report. I, yes. I suggested that to bring them here, actually. It would have been easier for everybody, but obviously, it makes more sense than combine the two people. Yeah, we'll go to White River, have a day. Yeah. Um, I do want to follow up with that for the online. Uh, with Sylvie. I'll give her a call. And Drago, would you be able to let me know, would you have the who did that course well, three years ago? Go, I, I, guess, I still got a certificate, but I have to look at that. I'm not sure if I have the notes still. Okay. But I will look more morning first thing. Yeah, because I, I think it's imperative. We've been in the background, Eileen's been working on this to try and get us the course. And uh, but maybe because of COVID, sorry, because of COVID, people didn't travel anymore. I think that was one of the reasons, one of the mistakes. There yeah. was a reason behind yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I, I'm just it was like, great. Oh. if it could be hybrid, it could be hybrid. Like, it's, Jesus, I don't mind driving to White River, but I was reluctant to go all the way to Geraldton. It's too much time in the car. And I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about wasting time. So anyway, but I'll call Sylvia about that. Okay, moving on to um, 14, new business. Baseball field, relocation. Oh, is that where we are? No. no? We're at oh my gosh. 
Okay, no, we're not at 14, we're at 13. Thank you, Eileen. Way to go. <laughs> okay, Good Roads Conference. Yes, I was there. Look at it, I'm first up. Okay, um, I just have to echo what uh, Dwayne's report said about the Good Roads Conference. I thought it was uh, really well done. I'm really excited actually for the Ontario Good Roads because they're becoming a national organization and they're working more, more and more of the other provinces are seeking out the courses that are offered. And um, in a few years, uh, in 2027, I believe it is, they'll be hosting a joint conference with um, a sister company or organization out of the States. So it'll be in 2027, it'll be the conference to go to because it's, it's going to have um, actual machinery. They're looking at bringing in, uh, I'm not even sure how many different pieces of equipment. And they, um, I think it's called the Exposition Center or Ex, um Anyway, it's a big center down in Toronto that they, they're renting to host that conference. So I just, I think, I just see good things uh, coming. And um, at this conference, I really am a supporter of the safety audits. So this was something that we advocated for at the government in November during Advocacy Day is about doing these audits that show you small changes in road structure and signage that make big consequences in health and safety. So sometimes uh, there was one example was at this one intersection where several people had lost their lives. All they added was a flashing red beacon to the stop sign. And then they didn't have incidences for, I think, four or five years. And that's the type of uh, so you do you get an audit done, and then these are the types of improvements that are made. It's not changing like the whole structure; it's just additions of signage and stuff. And mm -hmm. and I and uh, the speaker Ken Beer, he was he was pretty dynamic. So um, so that's all I have. If you have any questions on that, okay, um, Councillor Kistemaker. Yeah, you don't have anything to say. We did talk about that already. Yeah. Okay. Did anyone else have any questions for Belinda? There you go, did and I answered them. <laughs> I wanted to go ahead, so he's okay. <laughs> didn't work. Usually you're the one that wants a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so North Superior Workforce Planning Board. I have got to open this. I can't even remember. We just had our meeting the other day. Uh, um, go ahead, Belinda. Um, I was just wondering if this uh, ne this next presentation was at the the Thunder Bay District Municipal League conference when I was there. Okay. Um, I was wondering, did they again discuss this through NOMA? Uh, I don't know. I I can't recall. Okay. I don't think there was a. I don't remember a, a presentation like this at no mm -hmm. Basically, I know it was just uh, to give information about what people are doing when it comes to uh, hiring and. Um, um the guy that did the presentation he was trying to stress that we should watch when it comes to i don't know much about it but when it came to um the uh they have a new system out for hiring and uh basically paying attention as to not using it or it was supposed to be a very good tool So what was it for in the process of hiring or the application process or like when you're posting? You yeah, know? it was just um, more on what everyone is trying to do or use or have in order to look for people. Okay. I do want to comment. Uh, first of all, first question. I don't think we discussed this. Uh, what was the direction you needed for this or was this for information? Oh, this is just for information. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other comment I want to make, I have to reach out to the Sault Ste. Marie Immigration Portal 
because I've had a resident that uh, has a work visa that came down to see me and I don't quite understand work visas so I have to sit down to get understanding of that but um, basically they he has whatever level he has only gives him work permits for six months and then he has to renew it but if he was to relocate to one of these portals he would be um, fast-tracked into permanent residency. And I don't understand why in Northern Ontario it's only in the cities. And I was talking to um, uh, a colleague from the Timmins area, and it sounds like Timmins spread out their portal, like they their um, pilot program for this, they spread it to their area. So our area would fall with Sault Ste. Marie's. Um, so it's the Rural Inter-Immigration Pilot Program, I believe is what it's called. But I see it as a detriment to our community because the mill is hiring people under the work visas and then they'll have to relocate back to or leave our community so that they can actually become permanent residents. So I'm not Ooh. sure, yeah. Yeah, that was like, and and this person wants to stay in the community, has um, as family that uh, they want to bring here. They don't want to leave. Like, yeah, they see opportunity at the mill, like to grow yeah, there. Future. Yeah, future there. So I'm not sure if there's, if council knows any information on this or no. not, if they've, if you have any experience with work visas or that sort of thing. No? Okay. So, yeah, and I think most of the the staff, they were, um, the newcomers are using uh, an organization out of Sudbury that's linking them up. I think there's a Ivy partnership. Group. Ivy Group, that's exactly, Ivy Group, and they're working with the mill in conjunction, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Well, if there's any, if, uh, anyway, for you, Belinda, if there's any support that I can give there, I would like to. And then when I travel down to the Sioux, I want to, I'm going to call ahead of time and have a meeting on the phone, but I'm going to be traveling through on the 12th of June. And I'd like to have an in-person, like a face-to-face -to, -face to kind of understand this, because I think we might be able to attract more people. And I know that in my last meetings with Jill Millette, he had said there was about 18 new people on the docket to come over the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. So they can't all, like, they must slot into this level certificate somewhere. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Questions. Well, if, if you ask around and find any information out, let me know, because I want to ensure that horn pain, like, people can come and stay here yeah. and plant roots. So is there any more discussion on that? I'm kind of confused on that because just for the fact that you're signing a contract to be here for so many, like for two years or something. No, it's yeah. I, my understanding is you can work under a work visa for two years. Like and it's, then it's a, yeah, and then it's it. And when it's done, it's done. And I know, like I only have limited experience from when I had a nanny through the international nannies because that program is for permanent residency. You have to do two years as a nanny, and then you can apply, right? But I never inquired if there was a level of certificate they call it an actual work permit i can't remember if the work permit that this individual had was a five or a one but it was the lowest of the work permits and you need to have a higher work permit to get that qualification if you want to get permanent residency here go ahead counselor uh yeah the, um, marianne marianne zoni in white river would have a lot of knowledge in that yeah because they have Probably in excess of 20 people helping with their business. Okay. And, right. Yeah. And, and, and some of them are now, I believe, permanent residents. Okay. Would you yeah. be able to connect me with sure. Marianne? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Councillor Stefan. So I assume this work firm and visa is federal, right? To my understanding, not provincial. When I get hold of Carol Dew's office, and she, she is the person that should, that's one of the things that she works on. Yeah. And that, that she should have the all the information and hundred percent contact. That one is in the right direction. Yes, I yeah. think that would be mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. as well as uh, yeah. Peter mentioned that the tissue would happen. Do the federal that. Uh, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you, Drago. Well, I'll let you know on June 27th what I found out. Wait. Okay, now we're on 14. All right. Yes. Baseball field relocation. <clears throat> Dwayne, would you like to speak to your report? I don't think everything's in there. My report. Oh, sorry. sorry. Can I, Go ahead. Can yes. I just add something? Yeah, yes, I just can. wanted to mention that for the uh, build of construction link, um, uh, fencing is not part of the scope. So if you look at option two, um, that, that fencing part shouldn't be highlighted. Just wanted to bring, just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. Okay. Can I start this conversation? Yes, you can. Go ahead. Um, I'm really frustrated with this baseball thing. <laughs> Mainly because what the heck can we do with our 150? And when I look at this, it looks like we can't do anything. So <laughs> how can we get a better plan here to make it happen? Was that directed at Dwayne or at anybody? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. I'm in full agreement, and I would like to set another. I'm sorry, this is very important to the community, and I know we're bogged down. And we have, uh, we were asking so much of our staff, but I think we should have another meeting because it's so intense. And I really truly believe, like, just growing up in Horn Paint, I played ball on Charlie and Doris Paul's yard for the first 10 years of my life. Would have had about a 10% slope, so if you didn't catch the ball, it rolled right into the ministry. And then after that, we played the uh, public school in gravel, and we had a great time. I'm not saying that's what we're doing, but I've seen, and I'm not asking them to do it, but Dwayne and, and Stacy do a fantastic job with fencing and a bunch of stuff. So what I'm saying is, let's have another meeting. We get together, even have volunteers we got to get started and have a, a, a set a timeline, like a schedule over a couple of years that's realistic because shooting seven figures out for a uh, ball field is not going to happen. And if we just sit and scratch our heads and what can we do and how can we afford it, we'll never have a ball field met in there. So going forward, it's really important to the community. We, we sold the hotel, like the whole community backed it up, but we had to move the uh, a, a real a beautiful place that we had set up for a ball field. And now we're going to... We can't go too long without it. We, we promised the people we we're going to do it. Let's be realistic, come up with a timeline. Even if we have volunteer, I'm sure we'll get volunteers to help us out as well. And we have enough liability insurance and all that. Like, I mean, if we do everything to code and to spec, we should be fine. But if we're going to get uh, contractors to do it, it's never going to happen because we just can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, at, the, at those quotes, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and it doesn't have to be done all at once. Like the fence, it can be done in stages. Uh, we start, like, we have a, a, a counselor here that was a rec director for years. We, you know, we can go off of his advice on timelines for the, what, how do you do, how do you start it, and what, what are the dimensions, and but be realistic about it. Because right now, this is just pie in the sky dreams. So we can talk about it just like we want a new buildings and all that. It's not going to happen. We just don't have the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go back to Belinda's question. You see an obstacle that we have with the problem with the fencing? There's no depth. There's no depth for the fencing. That's the big obstacle. So, uh, is there another location we can use? We have to investigate. Right now we have to walk an up and build it to get as long as uh, one, one to three meters of clearance. And we're going to hold a 12-foot backstop for the U.S. I agree. I agree. The only option we dig down is hold the rate of the rock somehow. Yeah, that's wow. the issue with the good. Because back, I remember it was actually Tyler Hirschman and a group of, group of guys trying to get the uh, set one up right adjacent to the tower up there. Mm -hmm. that's great. And it was it was discontinued because of the rock. So, I mean, that, that we're not going to change what nature gave us, we, but we can change the location as we build up. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> okay, so my question is with the quote from Bill and with the fill, is that 
includes it going up higher then? That's why it has the 85,000 for fill? Take all the stuff out and rebuild it back from the rock out. Okay. 250,000. And the other question I had about the quotes is that the quotes from last year. Right. So. Has been refreshed. Yeah. So it's more expensive. Possibly. Yeah. Well, guarantee. Yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. I, I, so I'm just sorry. so council understands, um, the township can't just go with building up based on their quote, like our yeah. OTF, our OTF app application and um, agreements that states that we have to hire a contractor to design, shape, infill, topsoil, and hydro seed. So we would have to issue an RFP before moving forward with any of this um, construction anyhow. And then when we issue an RFP, that takes, yeah. like if it was out tomorrow, it still takes so much time to close it. Like there's, there's we timelines have, there, we yeah. We have to have those funds spent within 12 months. And I believe um, it was May 2023. 20, I, oh, uh, uh, I can tell, yes, it is. The grant starts, oh, yeah. the grant starts May 31st, 2023. Yeah, there you go. And by May 30th, 2024. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Councilor yeah. Panic? Yeah. I would, uh, I, would be, I mean, you have to do it. I just want to ask that question. I think we should approach other companies as well. Uh, I'm talking about vicinity. Somebody in Ursa, I mean, I see different trucks, White River. And Wawa was Brigo, whatever construction, I'm not sure, in Geraldton. Um, and do you realize when you do RFP for a contract versus tendering for the work? In the RFPs, if a person applies for that job, you could negotiate. In tender, you cannot. I watched Town of Alpha and Peter Politis made the issue second last meeting. So RFP, you can negotiate a person against a contract. Tender, you cannot. If the tender comes in, either accept it or reject it. So, yeah, I think Gerald then, Wawa. But to, to, I don't understand if the rock, bedrock is there, the cost of drilling the rock, placing your piping into the rock, it would have to be concrete in it. That's going to be out of this world. I mean, it just, it's not going to happen. So, that's that, 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 I mean, and if you build a base where you're gonna put, I'm not really worried about the home run fans because that field did not have the home runs first for first eight and a half years. So that's not it. We put a uh, snow fence. We had no money. Did this right? And didn't have to be. But could you again liability where your backstop is if you put a concrete base eight inches high so with the just the pipes go into the concrete, and that's where you extend your backstop, as opposed to drilling, adding another six feet of soil, uh, you know, liability wire. Basically, this thickness and maybe wire, and that's where you put your backstop. Did you need backstop? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, we didn't have backstop there in 1984 either. We put that up as well. So something, be cheaper. Yeah. Uh, Councillor, you're up here. Um, uh, just actually, do you, do you have to sure. okay. Just a second. I okay. said I'd go to no, Councillor Peter. Just make first. We did this on our own. Can we still tap into the funds, Melissa? Or you just got to go through contractor to issue that to apply for the grant. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So we can we have this um, contract that we've signed with OTF. So if we wanted to make changes to location, we would have to go for a change request. I'm sure it's not the double <laughs> layer that we have to do with IHIP. But if we put out an RFP, we can put it out <coughs> national. We can put it out as, to as many contractors as mm -hmm. we want. We can actually stipulate the price of the amount of money that we have. And it doesn't mean they're going to bid under it. But maybe they'll come closer. We've got an option. That's the point, exactly. For those things. And we can put it out as far and more as we want. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm of the mindset I don't want to move it. I think we're going to end up with a facility up there that would be amazing. And if it means we have to put a bunch of fill and we have to spend $200,000 filling it, then I think we should. Because if we have, we're going to run into the same problem that we got on our, our SDR, where we have too many parks, too many things all divided. So in the, and then my, is how much fill can we put actually a retaining structure around the park so that the fence is sitting on a retaining structure that's actually supported with the fill we put on top of it. It doesn't necessarily have to go into the rock. So I think this, I think we need to investigate it further. I do think the money we have would only cover the fill right now, right? Okay. And to make yeah. sure that, but we can start with that. We can start, like if we're going to do a phased approach and then we have, or a step-by-step, -step, because where are we, like, if we were to relocate, where would we relocate it? Like, I don't know if we have any other, go ahead. See your point? I, I, I'm not I'm a fan of that. that. Yeah. You mean the field area? It was outside. Okay, we'll go over here first. Just, just to note that the, with our contract with OTF, the first thing is design. So we don't have to figure out if it's concrete or whatever. Yeah. And the other thing is that the Zelmuth quote came in before we got the topographic survey. So the numbers could be higher or lower because they didn't know what was under the ground there when they gave us the quote. It was from just walking on the site. But the RFQ would go for design, shape, and infill. So we would at least, we'd have the numbers and they would, uh, design would be part of it. So we don't have to figure out the design part. Mm -hmm. We'd RFQ for that. Okay, so are we in agreement to do that? Like, yeah. Let's get the yeah. RFP out to have the design. Mm -hmm. And then should we have other things included in that? Or well, we would include the, the things that we have contracts. So design, shape, infill, topsoil, and hydro seed is what we put in the RFP. Okay. And if council wanted to put other stuff, um, then we'd have to come up with money for the others. Okay. I think we should move forward with that, with that location. Go ahead. Tell Sorry, I jumped there. No, no, you didn't. Belinda mentioned Cedar Point. Uh, the in, they're called infield, and it's a it's a valid uh, suggestion, but it floods most of the time in spring. The whole thing just floods. You know, when you cross the little bridge mm -hmm. in that area, it's so hot. Uh, so it's the only place I can think. Yeah, so. but I wish you know I thought the same thing. Yeah, lift that up. Well, when you look at the long term, like if you, you know, it's not going to be built tomorrow and then it's unfortunate. But at the same time, when you look at the longevity of our community, by having all of our recreation in one area, it makes sense. Like that part makes sense. And then to utilize that whole facility, the arena, and then the other additions that we're putting up there, we could actually maybe in the future have trade shows back and then what i'd like to see in the design it needs to hold like it, it needs to hold vehicles like we we need to have a good solid base i would rather us build something that's going to withstand the time and then and improve our community i'm concerned about cedar point because i feel like it would become a money pit I really do. I feel like we would look at it would become a liability, and then how are we? Like, are we? I guess we do have hydro out there, but I, I just that's my first concern. But it's it's up to council if we want to explore that. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Stefanik yeah. and then Peter. Motel Six is being built, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have fill. Why not ask them to transport the fill back of the arena for us? Where else are they going to put it? Uh, I'm not sure if that's the fill we need. Go ahead. We can't move fill without it being tested. So it has to be tested. If they move it from one spot to another, it will have to be well, tested. Well, it's tested because they don't have truckloads. What a deal thing to put it up to the field. It could be the base. Uh, go ahead. To address that question first, uh, just a note of interest. Uh, we were just had a meeting at the mill for that exact same thing. You're talking about this new rule in place, basically, right? It has to be tested. But no matter what, it has a third party. If they're moving a they fill, it has to be tested here, regardless of what a third party. So it could be accepted by a private ownership as in the town. 
So it would be tested no matter what, because they, if they're moving fill, they have to have it tested to go to wherever old an area, and they will accommodate because it's cheaper for them to uh, do that. Because at the mill, what they're doing is taking all the stuff that's coming off of 631, and it's cheaper for them to bring it, have it tested by a third party, approved, and being brought to the mill, and we're going to use a fill out there. So you have third party due diligence done, so you won't have any worries down the road. So that is that's something that we could tap into. <laughs> I like free fill. I mean, that's <laughs> if it is the stuff we need. That we Most, need mostly is sand because we dug up in the infield, and there's also earth as well as clay. The far end of the field at the, by the arena, it drops drastically. I mean, what an ideal thing to have right at the end. So it gives you extra and no cost. So that was all rock that was piled back there in the early mm -hmm. 70s when we had our water. But it drops uh, down the, the level. The contour of the level does drop yeah. down towards the... Uh, okay. The, just stop. So, yeah. So I guess the first... Um, <clears throat> I think we should stick to the plan that we have at hand and go with the RFP out with what we need on what we have the funds for. Like we went for that and um, and see what they come up with the design. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And let's not overthink it and make it too complicated. Mm -hmm. Like Drago alluded to earlier, we could do without a backstop to start with. The kids won't mind going to fetch that ball. We need something to start just that's the time. And then as we can build it, just make it, keep it simple mm -hmm. and build into what your long-term or our long-term vision is. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Arshana? Uh, <clears throat> probably 20 years ago in Tay Township, we put up a, a, a removable backstop because it just was not, the funding wasn't there. So we had a backstop that we could take down every fall and re-erect in there. So And that worked well. Um, very much more affordable, but it was there as well as, and we did, we used snow fencing yeah. to be able to do that. So aesthetically it isn't as pleasing, but at the, the meantime, it keeps the ball within and the backstop still looks the same. It's just a little bit of more work, but by far it offsets the awesome. initial cost. Mm. Okay, so what did you do? You built a frame for the bottom base. that just went out like a base? Section, yes, and then we made, makes it basically like a triangle. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So Hmm. Feel the dreams. <laughs> Build it and it'll come. <laughs> Build it and it'll come. Okay. Oh, you did you? I love it. Oh, gosh. Plenty of time. <laughs> you have to get some corn stalks on the side for a corn as people come out and like for us. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for the public works manager. Are you concerned? No, not if you both properly. I don't have a problem. I'll get the silt out of there. You won't have problems with that. Yeah. Cedar Point, I think you have a lot of cross movements. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be actually a good thing, is once we built our base, it's rock. It's not moving. No, it's really well drained. Mm. The proper materials will drain properly. It all works. Okay. Yep. Okay, so I guess on our next, uh, you're going to need direction for the RFP. So I'm not sure... How much time you need for that, or uh, I'll leave it to you can yeah. leave it to the meeting that you need it on. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like it's pretty set out what we have to RFP for, right? Yeah. Do we not have any other comments or discussion on this point? And from council first, no. Mm -hmm. And does staff need any more direction from us? I don't believe so. At this point, no? Okay. Oh, I have a resolution. We need a mover and a seconder, please. Move by Councillor Ted Shenman, second by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council Corporation of the Township of Hornbane is hereby acknowledge receipt of PWM SR. 2023-02 baseball field relocation update as provided by Dwayne Goodrow, Public Works Manager. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, item 15 is bylaws. So I, uh, <laughs> I had a scary moment, the moment I seen the animal bylaw in here, I have to confess. And then I was told that it was only on here because we're changing 
uh, user fees within these bylaws. So my heart rate stopped, <laughs> stopped it trying to explode. But um, we will eventually have to look at that animal bylaw, but not tonight for those reasons. But anyway, bylaws, the first one's 15.1. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please move by Councillor Dragos to pack, second by Councillor Tachan, and be it resolved that bylaw number 1999 being a bylaw to establish comprehensive user fee and service charges be here, hereby read a first and second time, considered read a third time, and finally passed. Any discussion or further comment on that bylaw? Put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Bylaw number 2000, landfill. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shinneman. Be a resolved that bylaw number 2000 being a bylaw for establishing and maintaining a collection, a system for the collection, removal, and disposal of garbage and other refuse in the corporation, the township of Hornpain, in the district of Algoma, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. I do have a couple of questions on this bylaw. <clears throat> this doesn't uh, just because we're updating the fees we still have the ability for because we have a contract coming up this year in regard to this so we didn't so, change the fees when council discussed it we said we were staying stay, staying status quo with the fee so it's just taking the fee schedule out of this bylaw and moving it to the user fee bylaw okay yeah <clears throat> And it doesn't, okay, so and it doesn't bind us in any of the negotiations we're going to have forward. Okay. Okay, any other questions on that? I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. File in number 2001. Mover and a seconder, moved by Councillor Drago Spanik, second by Councillor Ted Gentleman. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2001 be a by, being a bylaw to regulate animals within the township of Hornpain be hereby read a first and second time, be considered read a third time, and finally passed. Any comment on that bylaw? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. Parking bylaw number 2000, 2002. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Ted Gentleman, second by Councillor. Peter Kistemaker, be a result that bylaw number 2002 being a bylaw to regulate traffic and parking on highways, private property, and municipal property within the township of Hornpain be hereby read a first and second time, considered read a third time, and finally passed. Any comment on that bylaw? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Bylaw number 2003, Cemetery. <laughs> Uh, move on a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Gentleman. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2003 be a bylaw to regulate and govern all municipal cemeteries in the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain pursuant to the, the Funeral, Burial, and Cremation Services Act 2002, uh, SO 2002, I think it's Chapter 33. Be hereby read the first and second time be considered read a third time and finally passed. Uh, question on this bylaw. This is the same thing of taking the fee structure out? Yeah. Okay. And any further questions? No? Those in favor? And that's carried. Bylaw number 2004, extend expertise for municipal integrity commissioners. So we talked about this council a couple meetings back. Those uh, mover, please, moved by Councillor Drago Stanek. Second by Councillor Ted Gentleman. Be it resolved that bylaw number 2004 being a bylaw to extend the appointment of expertise for municipalities for EM as the Township of Corn Pains Integrity Commissioner be hereby spread a first and second time and consider it a third time and finally passed. Any further comment on that bylaw? There being none, those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Bylaw number 2005, the strategic plan. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Ted Shenneman, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker. Be a result of bylaw number 2005 being a bylaw to adopt the Township of Horn Pain's strategic plan, planning to succeed 2023 to 2027, be hereby read a first time, a, sec a second time, and considered read a third time, and finally passed. Any um, comments on the strategic plan bylaw? Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, You're happy with the picture change? I'm checking it out right now. Right, as soon as I got it. <laughs> Did you really? 100%. I don't believe it. I am. Okay. Sure. I had complete faith. 
And poor Eileen had to hound me for three days before, or four days, or whatever it was, before I said, just go to him. <laughs> like, what was my one picture sucked about, eh? <laughs> they were all, she was like, Cheryl, this doesn't have any rail or lumber in them. <laughs> it's farming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not farming country. Well, we want it to be. Yeah, we want it. <laughs> anyway, I put that to a vote. You guys in favor? And that's carried on a vote. Okay, motions, 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 none. 17, we're going into a closed session. Am I going to move her in a second there, please? Moved by Councillor Peter Kiss to make a second by Councillor Drago Stanek. We resolve that the next portion of the meeting at 8.45 p.m. be closed to the public. In order to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board, a trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, financial, or label relation information supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board, which if disclosed, could reasonably expect to prejudice significantly the competitive position or interfere significantly with the contractual or negotiations of persons, groups of persons or organization and a position plan procurement criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried out on or to be carried on behalf of the municipality or local board pursuant to section 239 bik of the Municipal Act 2001. Those in favor? And that's carried. Oh my gosh. We
Yes. We're good. We're live. We're live. Okay. Okay. Just some uh, technical issues as we got back on to live. And uh, if I can get a mover and a seconder to return to open, moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor uh, Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornbeam does but hereby return to open Council at, sorry, I don't have a 9.20 p.m. Those in favour? And that is carried. So we discussed a few items in our closed session, but one that I do want to highlight is that council has given direction to issue an RFP for the canteen. And from there, we can go to our confirmatory bylaw. If I get a mover and a seconder, moved by Councillor Drago Stefanik, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that bylaw number 2006, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at the regular meeting held on Wednesday, May 17, 2023, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally pass. Those in favour? That is carried. Oh. And adjournment moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation, or sorry, that Council does hereby adjourn the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, May 17th, 2023 at 9.21 p.m. Those in favour? And that's carried. Here we go.